Hello, welcome back. This is a Pokemon fanfic by Sucker, The Legacy of Red. Previously on Dragon Ball... <coughs> sorry. Previously on Legacy of Red, our hero Michael received a Charmander from Professor Oak and said farewell to his home of seven years. He rushed down ledges of Route 25 and is about to arrive in Cerulean City. Chapter 3. Goodbye, old friend. It was a bright day in Cerulean City. The streets were filled with various kinds of people and Pokémon. Two men, both accompanied by Machokes, were comparing their muscles with each other while their Pokémon were doing the same. An old man sat on a bench with a Politoed and a Poliwrath enjoying a muffin. A few hundred meters from him a good-looking young woman read the newspaper while a group of youngsters with Rattatas glared at her in a very disturbing way. Cerulean City hosted Kanto's finest spa, which simultaneously acted as a Pokémon gym. The spa was very recognizable, a round building with a happy-looking Dugon sign on front. The water theme could be seen in the way people dressed, on the marketplace and in the buildings. Most ho houses were painted ocean blue or white, some of them decorated with nice wave-like patterns. Cerulean City was a real jewel of a city, stunningly beautiful. At least, that's how Michael imagined it. As Michael walked the streets, he passed various shops selling souvenirs, perfume and various luxurious items for rich tourists. The buildings in Cerulean City were not very tall, but everything looked clean and the city infrastructure had been extremely well taken care of. Other, there were shops selling technical machines and Pokemon medicine. Michael considered entering one of such shops when suddenly a large raticate ran past him, chasing a small meow. Funny how in ancient times cats used to chase rats. Well, not anymore. Having knocked out a few ratatas and ekans on his way to Cerulean City, Charmander was a bit tired. So, the first thing Michael needed to do was visit the Pokemon Center. Surprisingly enough, even in such a big city there was only one of them. The spacious Pokémon Center was lively, trainers sharing their adventures, discussing battles and judging each other's Pokémon. Chances and Blisses ran here and there taking care of injured and fainted Pokémon. Only after a brief wait, Michael's now level 7 Charmander was fully healed. The nurse Joy told him the term commonly used for such color anomaly is his Charmander possessed. Apparently his Charmander was a shiny. Michael had previously sticked uh, to more scientific terms, but it was good to learn to speak the language people really used and understood. Next, Michael went shopping. He decided to keep an extra 4 billion on his account in case of emergencies, uh, and so he only bought a bike with 1 million, some Pokeballs, full heals, super potions, repels and food for his Pokémon. Michael sent the remaining money away to his PC money storage system he had helped Bill create, and jumped to his new bicycle. There was a reason these things cost a million. It wasn't their speed, acceleration or even reliability. It was the ability to store the bike away so that it weighed zero kilograms and took only a mini minimal amount of room. Bill had explained to him about this technology, but Michael never understood it. It had something to do with switching the electromagnetic force of atoms to the opposite, then managing to control the chaos by organizing the half-antimatter atoms into a very, very small size, then transforming the matter back to normal whenever the wa user wanted. Somehow, this removed the gravitons associated with gravity from the bike, but like said, Michael didn't quite understand the process. The super sophisticated technology was partially implemented in Bill's PC storage system. Bill was a genius, no doubt about it. Michael was just a good programmer. The bike felt good, but Michael decided to go on foot for now, because he was afraid Umbreon couldn't keep up with him. He was just casually strolling around the city, looking for a place to buy a town map, when a muscular but kind-looking man interrupted him. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. That's a fine Umbreon you have there. I was wondering, well, <laughs> nothing, sorry. Umbreon and Michael both raised their uh, eyebrows. <laughs>
<laughs> man was obviously high. I mean, ah, <laughs> never mind. Oh yeah, the man pressed his head down and continued. I my daughter. She's already quite old. Eh? She doesn't have any focus. I know, I know she has been dreaming of a Pokemon adventure. <laughs> and I hate myself for not letting her go, but I really needed her to take care of our farm, and now I'm afraid she doesn't want to go anymore. Michael and Umbron looked at each other. <laughs> The man was <laughs> so ridiculously high, you just couldn't help but laughing. He was a tall, muscular man who had been smoking a lot. Although Michael was wondering why on earth this man was telling him this, he couldn't, cal uh, couldn't help but feeling pity for this poor girl he had never met. So this man, he was just laughing at him. Uh, there was something sad and genuine in the man's voice, and so Michael replied in equal kindness. Is there something I can do to help? At this, the man raised his head and offered to shake Michael's hand. It's um, Professor Oak. Um, good testimony of your character was accurate. I'm sorry for being a bit high. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Bruno, formerly of Edit 4. I now live with my family in Valet City, smoking pot. We are not farming any pot there, but we have our own farms and uh, no pot. Uh, uh, maybe some uh, do you want to buy? I lately quit my duties in the Elite 4 in order to relieve my daughter Emily from her farm duties. After he was sure he understood everything Michael asked. So, you want me to come to your farm and encourage your daughter to leave? <coughs> no, 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 Br Bruno replied uh, and shook his head. Professor Oak told me about your Umbreon. I also have an old dark type Pokemon. It's a hound dome named Merc. I'd be honored if Umbreon would like to come live with it. Umbreon raised his head towards Michael. Michael hugged his lifelong friend and Umbreon poured a sad purr. It was now obvious they would depart ways. Bruno was a good man and Umbreon would enjoy living on a farm. It sounded like she and Merc would have a good dark Pokemon time together and besides, Michael had wished to travel alone, accompanied only by his own Pokemon. After the most emotional goodbyes of the day, Bruno took out the Natu and teleported off with Umbreon. Michael was left, almost in tears, wondering why on earth such an experienced trainer like Bruno used uh, such a weak Pokemon to teleport around. And what exactly had happened to him? Why was he so high that even the storyteller couldn't help laughing? Before departing Cerulean City, Michael called his childhood friend Misty to see if she was in town, and she very well was. They went to Misty's favorite cafe and talked about the upcoming adventure. Misty told him about his adventures, uh, his, wait a minute, with her, about her adventures, uh, with Ash and Brock, while Michael listened with half an ear. He was still thinking about Umbreon but was at the same time excited about embarking on his own adventure with Charmander. Michael promised to send Misty a postcard every now and then, and Misty promised to keep him on track in case any new talented trainers came to her gym. Michael told her he didn't need the information and asked for a town map instead. Michael thought to himself he would challenge the Cerulean City gym later when he had a strong grass or lightning Pokemon. But for now, it was time to train hard and capture new Pokemon. With Umbreon gone, Michael could ride the bike whenever he wanted. Misty had given him a town map in exchange for the promise to send her pro postcards. Using the town map, Michael planned the next step of his journey. He would go to Mount, uh, Mount Moon into Buter City, 
where he hoped to be able to stay for a while. He didn't want to go through the ton Mount Moon tunnels, even though he knew it was possible. Michael wanted fresh air and to enjoy the beautiful landscapes. He would become the greatest Pokemon master ever. <laughs>